Double data rate, fourth generation synchronous dynamic random access memory. Say that instead of DDR4 from now on, and you'll sound like one cool cat. It's the RAM required by X99 and most Z170 chipsets, along with the up and coming AM4 platform from AMD. We've been told time and time again that 8GB is the bare minimum for modern gaming, and that 16GB is beginning to take hold as the standard. Presumably, anything less than 8GB results in stuttering, induced lag, and sharp decreases in frame rates. Let's find out how much you actually do need, and on a platform that's neither outrageously overpriced nor overbalanced. Walter White stepping up to the plate again this weekend. He's packing an i7-6700K overclocked to 4.4 GHz, an ASUS Strix ROG GTX 1070 running at stock out of the box, and 16GB and four 4GB modules of DDR4 clocked to 3200 MHz. For these tests, the only changing variable that's kind of a redundant thing, changing variable. The only variable was the amount of RAM installed. That's it, we're ready to go. Let's start off with City Skylines. I always repeat this because some may be new to the scene, but Cities is one of those CPU intensive titles. It'll utilize as many threads as you throw at it, verified right here. So I expected in this case that memory increases would make a substantial difference. They did not. At 1440p, even 4GB of memory yielded very playable frame rates, no stuttering, and a minimum that blended in with the other two scenarios. And as for the difference between 8 and 16GB, no change worth noting. Dropping the resolution to 1080p yielded much of the same, so even when the CPU is being heavily taxed, available SDRAM in this case makes virtually no difference when it comes to frame rates for this game. Now let's see if this trend continues. GTA 5, an excellent blend of GPU and CPU intensive scenes, reveals much of the same. The difference between 8 and 16 gigabytes is negligible, and we only saw a 25% reduction at 4 gigabytes. But while our average and maximum was on par, and frequent stuttering occurred, resulting in a minimum of zero according to both Fraps and the in-game benchmark. Lowering the resolution to 1080p revamped the story though, and across the board, 4 gigabytes was acceptable, not recommended, but still acceptable. I should also note in this scenario that 16 gigabytes pulled away slightly from the 8 gigabyte run as a consequence of the higher frame rate. Witcher 3 is much like GTA 5, but on steroids. Everything in this game is what GTA 5 would be if options like Hairworks were made available. But get this, running the Ultra preset, even 4 gigabytes was enough for steady gameplay. At one point the game froze, resulting in the zero you're seeing at the bottom, but for a majority of the test, I honestly couldn't see a difference. If we're focusing solely on the averages, we'd be hard pressed to discern between the three, oddly enough. At 1080p, identical story. Average margins were the same, and I kid you not, at the exact same point in the benchmark the game locked up for a brief second during the 4GB run. Being that RAM availability was the only variable here, it makes sense to conclude that this was the cause. Total War Warhammer, which taxes the heck out of a single CPU core, yielded results that were all within the margin of error, and this blew my mind. I honestly expected RAM amounts to make a difference here. It's very likely that since only one core is being heavily used, many of the memory intensive scenes were being delegated to the graphics card, not system RAM. The story was nearly identical once again in 1080p. The last game I tested was Forza Motorsport 6 Apex. It's in beta currently and can be downloaded via the Microsoft Store for free, so check it out if you haven't already. I tested this one because I knew Walter White could shell out some serious frames, and I wanted to see if that made any more of a difference between the three scenarios. However, I was disappointed to find out that, according to Microsoft, 4GB of system RAM simply wouldn't cut it for Forza. I find this difficult to believe if it's enough for Witcher 3 and we're pushing over 200 frames per second in 1440p for Forza 6, 4GB would likely be more than enough. Perhaps they'll relax the constraints once the official game releases. Now if you're shocked by these results, don't worry, you aren't alone. I actually reran all of my Witcher 3 and City Skylines tests to ensure that these frame rates were consistent. I honestly just didn't believe them the first time around. I also lowered in-game settings only to find much of the same, higher frame rates across the board but no marginal increases between 4GB and say 8. At this point, really 16GB seems like a complete waste of time, save a few games like Ark Survival Evolve that erroneously dumped tons of data into system memory by default. I didn't purchase Ark because many have recently complained about the addition of paid DLC introduction on a pre-release, which I think is stupid, but even so, unless Ark is the only game you play, managing with 8GB will more than suffice currently. 
Now, if you're into content creation, by all means opt for 16 gigabytes. I'd say that is the bare minimum actually for content creation, especially in 4K. But if you're only into future-proofing your gaming PC, I don't really see that making much sense now. Future-proofing has been just thrown around a lot lately and it's, it's just kind of like, well, it's peace of mind. I don't have to worry about upgrading my computer anytime soon. But upgrading RAM takes about 15 seconds to do. I mean, upgrading from 8 to 16, assuming you have four slots and two of them are occupied, literally just requires you to pop the slot open and insert two more modules. That's it. If you're if you want to pay more upfront, go ahead. But eight gigabytes, according to these results that we've just seen, is more than enough for modern gaming. My logic behind this is that since four gigabytes still resulted in relatively smooth gameplay, save the one game that refused to open, we've got a long way to go before eight gigabytes begins acting like four gigabytes is currently. It's your rig, so by all means do what you want, but if I was in your position personally and all I did was play video games on my PC, I would only purchase 8GB of RAM, take the save money, and reinvest it into something like an SSD, which would make a huge difference in boot times, load times, pretty much everything. Take it from a guy who used to only use a hard drive, night and day difference. If you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up, give it a thumbs down if you do feel the complete opposite, and subscribe for more content like this here on the channel. This is Science Studio, thanks for learning with us.